things are exceedingly difficult to predict. I think we can easily point to, say, someone like O.J. Simpson and say, well, when someone has criminal sorts of behavior, they are likely to act out again. And that generally is true. On the other hand, you've got somebody like Casey Anthony out there whom we haven't heard from in quite some time. So it's not necessarily the case that she would cause more trouble from a criminal standpoint. However, from the standpoint of her borderline personality, which has been discussed at length in court, those people do almost always create a lot of interpersonal chaos and trouble. They get better as they age, towards 40 and 50 years of age, so things actually might get better as she gets older. But beyond that borderline issue, we've been speculating that she has some psychopathy as well. And if indeed that's true, we would hear from her again. Jody is a danger to society. That's tonight's bold accusation, and that's one that Vinnie Politan is very anxious for the prosecution to prove. So let him begin that proof. He's standing by at the HLNTV.com evidence room. Vinnie? Thanks so much, Joey. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, first let me introduce Dr. Daniela Schreier. She's a psychologist who's going to help me out tonight. Now, to understand how dangerous Jody is, let me begin uh, by introducing you to a couple of friends of Travis Alexander who got to interact with Jody Arias. Take a listen to what they said and the vibe that they got from this killer. We don't like Jody coming over to our home. We feel very uncomfortable with her. While they're having this conversation, trying to convince Travis to break up with her, um, she is right outside the upstairs do uh, door listening to the whole conversation. And she walked in, and she just had this face on like she was the devil, and she was going to commit a murder right then and there. She thought you were cheating with Travis at one point and cornered you in the bathroom? She was always creepy. She gave me a really eerie feeling, mm -hmm. uh, something I've never felt before. All right, now let's talk about people who have gotten away with killing other people or people that have disappeared in their lives. Drew Peterson. His wife disappears, then he gets convicted for killing another wife. Lynn Turner, one husband dies of poisoning, a second husband dies of poisoning. She wasn't arrested the first time, got arrested after the second one passed away. You're in Vandersloot, you know his story, Natalie Holloway, and then what happened in South America. Dr. Danielle, what happens when someone gets away with it or someone kills someone and is not prosecuted? Well, it means you're pushing the boundaries even more next time, Vinny, right? You get away with it, you have some narcissistic tendencies, I'm grandiose, I, I can do whatever I want. Let me try that again. How far can I go? Okay, now let's talk more about um, Jody Arias herself. She is callous, ladies and gentlemen. Here's her mugshot, Dr. Daniela. Here she is in the interrogation room when she's being arrested for the murder of Travis Alexander, doing a headstand. Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what that tells you. Well, it means it's very inappropriate in that situation. Generally, you would be anxious. You're having a mug shot, shot taken. You're not there smiling. And what she tells later on, well, I think Travis would have approved of that. There was nothing wrong with it. She doesn't even feel guilty about it. No guilt, no remorse, no feeling. It's callousness. Um, she's also very cunning. Here she was interviewed March 7th, 2009. Take a listen to this. One of my first thoughts when I was actually being booked, I was a little like, wow, I see this stuff on TV all the time. This is so interesting. And I thought to myself, you know, what would Travis do if he were in this situation? This is why I'm here. He would, he would be smiling. He would be like, hey, you know. I knew it would be all over the internet, so why not? There's just, there's no reason to be upset over this in my mind. Um, everything, I have faith that in the, in the end, everything will be made known, everything will come out. And, uh, in the meantime, smile, say cheese. Dr. Daniela, what did you hear from uh, Jody Aries in that interview? Tell well, the ladies and gentlemen. She was very glib, superficial, and charming, and that makes for a very dangerous combo. Because you're thinking she's coming across as very emotional, very friendly, you want to believe her. But then at the end of the day, she might come back to get you. And now the last one, sadistic. These are all the blunt force trauma injuries she got on her legs. Uh, Travis Alexander got on his legs from Jody Arias. How does that happen? Stomping or hitting him with something. Why was she doing that? She was stabbing and shooting him. That's one indication. And finally, I want to leave you with Jody Arias' own words. Listen closely to this. Is there any way I can see some of those photos? What is it that you're trying to piece together? Um, I don't know. There's... There's also a bit of morbid curiosity, I think. 
Morbid curiosity, Jody Arias's words. Joey?